So we got something pretty exciting today on Blade District. We have my first artisan cut. Oh, I'm about to open the box. Let's grab it from the bottom. My first artisan cutlery. And I bought this because it looked absolutely gorgeous in the photos. This is, let me see, I forget the exact name. It is the small Centauri, Centauri? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Centauri, I believe. Who's the maker of this? Is it, I wanna, is it Ray Laconico? I believe it's Ray Laconico. Uh, yes, it is Ray Laconico. And I love my Ray Laconico designs. I love my uh, Geminis, I have a ton of those. But this one here, if you wanna see the product numbers right there, this is the Knife Center Exclusive with the VG10 Damascus blade, pack of wood handles, and like a gold accent. I'm pumped. It's a front flipper as well. This to me, we're gonna open it right now, literally. But I bought it because it looked beautiful. To me, it looked like a work of art, a piece of art. So we're gonna see if it looks as beautiful in person and then how it feels and performs as a knife, as a tool, as it's meant to be used. Let's see. All right, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. We have tons of videos, or at least I have tons of videos coming out, unboxing, reviews, just knife shenanigans, whatever, and upcoming giveaways into the future, including a Kaiser TI Sheepdog full titanium video up here with the unboxing, a little more info on that if you're interested. So we have a nice little pouch with some gold accent. We have a card, Artisan Cutlery, you have all the specs here, Damascus, this is a VG10 Damascus from Recollection, I, I don't think I'm wrong about that, I'm pretty sure if I'm wrong I will put it here, but I'm pretty sure this is a VG10, uh, hardness 58 to 60, it's wood, which is the pack of wood, ceramic bearings, a little more information there put this away for now and this Damascus from what I've uh, seen in the photo should be a little bit more of a polished brighter finish compared to some of the Civivis but we're gonna compare we're gonna compare it to other knives do some weight testing paper cutting all that good stuff hopefully I remember to do that all let's see oh look at that the plastics in here but it's already come out of the plastic too oh my god look at that all right let's uh Anything else in here? Ooh, look at that gold just popping in the light. Just plastic, all right. Let's put this guy away. So the wood is a fairly dark wood, although there is some grain to it, as you can easily see. You could already start seeing that Damascus and how it's a lot lighter than some of the more budget like Civivis, which I have one right here, quickly for comparison. You're gonna see this being, uh, as some folks don't like this as much, and this was the only Damascus I've dealt with, and I thought it looked nice. It's unique, you know? But it's definitely, oops, come on. Oh, there didn't pass a D10 yet. There we go, it's smooth after that. But this guy just has a beautiful look to it. Like I said, you got the gold accent everywhere, including the pivot collar, backspacer. I like how he integrated the lanyard loop. So you don't see nothing here, beautiful, nice and flat, but you have it there, kind of cuts into the backspacer, which goes pretty low. You have this nice milled clip, which looks like it's being held in place from the inside. I don't even, this is a confusing little guy. There is no screws here, no screw there. And then I guess it's just being sandwiched in between. The clip itself, Not bad. I don't know necessarily if it's titanium that's been anodized or if it's like an aluminum. The knife itself does not feel too heavy. What do we have here? We have a serial number. I see Laconico sticking out there. Damascus. Again, you can see the green in the wood. It's just beautiful. Let me know what you think right now. Before I even open it, what do you think of the look and the style of this knife? because that is what attracted me to this knife. I looked at the photos and I was like, this thing looks beautiful. The wood does look a little bit darker. All right, let's see. So there's no fuller or anything. We see a swedge coming down. So this looks like it's a dedicated front flipper. 
The good thing is it is a liner lock, so you don't have to worry too much about finger placement over there. Let's uh, give it a first flick. I like how my fingers naturally go right on that pocket clip to hold it, which with a front flipper, I like that. And this finger goes right inside that groove there, the famous Laconico groove that he puts on a lot of his knives. So I do feel pretty secure already. I have no clue how strong or not strong the D10 is. That flipper is pretty big, but it's not a pointy one up. It's more of just like a right angle. So let's see, ready? First open. Ooh, that was easy. Let's check out that blade again, now that we have it open. This is really nice. Trying to get different light angles on it. Like right now we have a little bit of shadow going on, but you can actually see the detail still. Wow. So here's a little open profile for you. He feels pretty light. I'm excited to get away. You see the gold in there. No milling on the liners at all, but the wood, I assume, is pretty light. Let's see how the close is. Very smooth. Oh, I like that detent, the way that snapped, because the detent's not that strong, which is okay. With a front flipper, sometimes you don't want it too strong. But listen to that close. That is nice. That is satisfying. So in the hand, again, this is the small Centauri, if I'm even pronouncing that correctly. I have slightly smaller hands. I'll put a little something right here that's give or take what my hand size is. And for me, the small is perfect. I can get a full four finger grip. Of course, without being a flipper knife at all, you can choke up very, very close to the edge. And the pocket clip, nothing. I don't feel anything. This knife is extremely, extremely comfortable. Wow, can we do it like this? Yes, we can. Already break. Oh, look at that. This guy's breaking in beautifully already. Whoops. So let's talk about liner lock access because I just slipped off, but I think that was just me being stupid. <laughs> Honestly, as you can see, it's cut. The lock itself is completely flat, so maybe that's why I kind of slipped for a second. It would have been nice if you put a little bit. Yeah, this is pretty smooth. It wouldn't have hurt to put a little bit of texturing in there, but there is sufficient opening there that you could just use the meat of your thumb and close it. Wow. Again, first artisan cutlery knife. A little bit of a fail there. Let's close it, try again. When it comes to front flippers that are not a strong detent, they actually are easy to open, but you just have to get them right. The detent on this reminds me, do I have it over here? Here he is. Maybe it's not as light, but it reminds me kind of of the, the, the McKenna, where it is a light detent and it makes for an easy open of a variety of ways. I can't do that with a lot of knives, but I can do it with this one. I almost cut myself there. Can we do it this way? Come on. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. This guy does drop pretty good when you let go of it. But it's perfect. I think it works perfect. It's definitely on the lighter side, but that's gonna make it easy for most folks. Again, I just gotta look at this. The way the Damascus looks with the wood and the gold, it just attracted me to this knife. This looks like a beautiful knife slash work of art. Ray Laconico, Knocked it out of the park, I think, with this one. Knife Center with their exclusive. I think the exclusive part of this 
is the pack of wood. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it almost slipped off over there. Of course, the wood doesn't give the most texturing. So if you're doing something like this, really make sure you're holding on to it tight. The wood itself is unique. It does have a groove in there. It's not obviously the most textured material in the world, considering it's smooth. But this knife, it's a beautiful piece, like I said. Let's see the lockup real quick. Little bit of play, little bit of play, more than I would like. Let's see if it's centered. Kind of hard to see, but it looks to be centered. So there is a little bit more play than I would like. And if I didn't mention already, this knife, I've had so many knives. So this, I've had this knife probably for like three weeks before I unbox it, if not longer. I bought it for 109, whatever, 95, whatever it is, basically 110. Right now I'm looking at Knife Center, it's $99.95, it's 100 bucks, it's $10 cheaper. So it's already cheaper than what I paid for it. And it's not even like, well it says special price, so I don't know if it's like a current discount or what. Let's see if we can do a reverse flick on it. I feel like if the swedge wasn't there it would have been easier, but at the same time, I feel like we might be able to because the detent's not too strong. So we're going to get a little bit of meat under there and one, two, three. Ooh, that is nice. So the VG10 Damascus is shiny and it offers, since it's shiny, it gives a little bit of a, a little bit of grip, a little bit of traction, making it very easy actually to deploy like that. So if you're not a fan of just doing a top flipper, front flipper, whatever you want to call it, which does work really well, I'm telling you, reverse flick in a piece of cake, slow roll, same thing, since it detents on the lighter side, you can easily just use your thumb. Look, not even that much pressure. So for folks who don't want a dedicated front flipper, this to me is not a dedicated front flipper. As you can tell, the reverse flick is pretty easy on the dot and slow roll, at least for me, very easy as well. So you get the benefit of having this slim profile with no flipper tab. The blade doesn't come up too, too high. Uh, you know, no thumb studs. So it does have a sleek profile. It's not super thin or thick. I think it's just about perfect, especially in the hand. It feels great. It's definitely a smaller knife, hence why it's the small version. But I just wanna make a point that although it is a dedicated front flipper in the sense that there is no thumb studs or flipper tab, don't worry about it. You could open it plenty of different ways. The McKenna I was able to reverse flick and not many can. This, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say most folks are gonna be able to do that reverse flick because of the blade, how much room you have and how it's a little more grippier than some steels. And the slow roll, like, you know, Again, I feel like most people can do that. Let's get a quick weight on this guy. Like I said, he feels pretty light. So what is uh, Knife Center saying? Knife Center is saying that the blade length is 2.87, which we're going to try measuring ourselves real quick. 2.87. Let's see if they got that right. Yeah, a little over 2.75. I think th there we go. Yep. Cutting edge is about two, it wants to focus on the wrong thing. Cutting edge is closer to 2.7 ish. So yeah, 2.87 seems about right. So keep that in mind, this is an under three inch blade, which will make it legal for a lot of folks. Weight, they are listing it at, what are they listing it at? I'm trying to look real quick. I actually don't see a weight here unless I am totally blind. So we're gonna weigh it ourselves. Let's see, 2.87 inch blade. For that, we are getting a weight of 2.54. So fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. 2.54 ounces and you're getting 2.87 inches of blade. What about, what did I say, 2.7 give or take? cutting edge of this beautiful VG10 Damascus with this pack of wood, gold colored hardware. Again, work of art to me. You know, it's all personal preference. Some people are gonna love it. Some people are gonna hate it. I love this guy. So now a quick size comparison here, cause let's see, I have a, a few knives here that most folks either have or have handled. 
the famous Ontario rats. We will first start off with the rat 2 right up here. Much, much bigger. And then the rat 1. Did I get that right? I might have done it backwards. Is the rat? Hold on. I think I'm doing this backwards. I don't know what I said before, but we have the rat 1, which is the big one, and the rat 2, which is the small one. As you can see, he's even smaller than the rat 2. Right? Why does it look identical here? Let's put him back down and see. Hmm. Maybe the camera angle's playing tricks on us. Let me bring it up one more time. Yep, it's smaller for sure. So this guy comes in smaller than even the rat model too. As you can tell, it's a small knife, but you do get a lot of handle on it. I'm trying to recall this one here, ergonomically, it feels great, but you're kind of squished backwards because you have this, which is great for like forcing and protecting your finger versus this one a more open handle allows you to really choke up on it and it acts as a longer handle. As far as cutting edge goes, you have, looks like you're still getting a little bit more on the rat, which makes perfect sense. The handle itself almost looks small. Well, yeah, smaller on the um, Centauri or whatever. Hope I'm pronouncing that right again. But it feels bigger in the hand. It feels much bigger in the hand. While we're here, we're gonna notice this jimping, which I really wouldn't call jimping. It's mainly for that front flipper. Yeah, they didn't put it up top. And usually it's nice to have it wrapped around, but I'm gonna say right now, you don't need it up top because you're really pushing inward this way. And that's not meant to be usable jimping. So I'm not worried about that. You can feel it, but honestly, it's not meant to be that. The top is not sharp at all. There's an ever, ever so slight, I guess ever so slight chamfer, because I honestly don't feel it. They knocked it down just enough. We'll compare it to an Elementum, since that is another very popular knife. So closed, very similar in length, Profile wise, we have a flipper on this one. The blade comes out more, very similar as well. This is the marbled carbon fiber one. And when they are open, let's put them down real quick just to kind of see. They look very, very similar in size. Once we pick it up, the Elementum. Yo, these camera tricks are driving me crazy because when it's down, they look almost identical. The Elementum might be a hair longer. Blade? Yeah, blade's longer. But not too far off. Not too far off. We go pivot to pivot. Not too far off. But as you can tell, he's a smaller knife. This guy is a smaller knife. But not as small, for example. Or is it? Nope. Uh, this is the Mini Sheepdog by Kaiser. Yeah, not as small as the Mini Sheepdog by Kaiser. Yeah, this guy, when you're holding it, you're stuck back here. Well, I shouldn't say you're stuck, because without the flipper tab, you can come up here. But something about this one, ready for the squeak? This guy's super squeaky. I don't know if you can hear that. This guy, though, he's pretty awesome. Let's uh, do a little paper cut test, see how sharp it comes out of the box, and then I think we're going to conclude the video after that. So we have some leftover paper from other paper cutting tests. Feels pretty sharp. Let's see how it performs. First cut, ready? Ooh. Yup. Wow. Oh, that was already started. Not bad. Cutting through very nicely. As you can see, this paper is not that big, so I can't do too much with it. So yeah, as you can see, it's a 
pretty sharp out the box, doing a great job, not seeing too many like scruffy marks on it or anything. So let's clean this up real quick. All right, we are back, but we are also finished. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead, subscribe for more, give it a like, drop a comment. Let me know what you think about this beautiful knife. Again, subscribe for future videos and upcoming giveaways, including the Kaiser TI non-flipper sheepdog. Wow, do you see how that thing shuts? But that's it for this video. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would love to hear your opinion and comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.